In this video, I'm going to show you how different chunk sizes can affect your RAG applications, which is a technique that lets you talk to your documents. RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. It's a common use case with large language models. The goal of RAG is to automatically provide an AI model with relevant text to help the model come up with a better answer to your query. This is especially true when the content is more recent or more specialized or more private than what is already in the model. Otherwise, we're limited to either what the model already knows or what we're able to copy and paste into the prompt. With traditional RAG, there are three main processes. The first is to create a collection of text fragments or chunks along with an embedding that's a mathematical representation of the semantic meaning of each of the texts. The second process is to take any query, encode it as an embedding, and then find all the texts that have a similar embedding to the query. The third is to provide all the source texts that correspond to the matching embeds to the model, along with the actual query to generate an answer. In a recent video, I looked at the chunk size that might be best when using the collection of embeds to figure out what source material to refer the user to based on any query. That's just a small portion of a true RAG solution because I wasn't handing the results onto a model. In this video, I wanna go a step further, looking at chunk sizes as they pertain to a more full RAG solution. Of course, as pointed out in the comments to that previous video, this is just one of many variables that are at play when deciding on how to build a RAG solution. Some others include how many chunks to send to the model, what algorithm, to use to figure out similarity, how to store the chunks. Should the length of the chunks be determined based on the word count or, or token count or, or maybe based on semantics? In fact, I was watching a recent lecture at Stanford that covered RAG techniques and they showed even more variables that you need to make a decision on to build a complete solution. Normally, I like to ensure that every chunk is made of multiple complete sentences I'll be looking at all of those other variables in the videos to come. Really, we should be thinking of all the things, but that would be a five day long video. In the previous video, each query resulted in a single correct answer. I wanted to know which was the best video to recommend someone to watch. But it's a little different here. This time I'm handing off the content to a model to generate an answer. And there isn't really a single right answer. There are a lot of ways to answer the question, so I can't really automate this since I don't know all the correct ways ahead of time. There are some frameworks that attempt to solve the issue, but they often use ChatGPT or some other model to assess the answers. And the reason I'm using RAG in the first place is that I'm trying to answer a question based on my docs. To use ChatGPT to assess this would be to assume it was perfect every time. But you don't have to use any of the services for very long to see that none of them are perfect, even half the time. Plus, then I have to build a RAG solution to grade a different RAG solution. Reminds me of that monitors question in Enemy of the State. Well, who's gonna monitor the monitors of the monitors? I guess I could probably train or fine tune a model to do this too, but sometimes it's just quicker to do it manually. So I created a tool to help figure out which are the best answers from all the options. It was roughly based on another tool I've used to figure out which CFPs to accept for the various DevOps Days conference I've helped manage. Three options appear on the screen and you rank them. Then it picks three others and you rank those. You keep going until all of them are ranked, some more than once. If you accept or reject one and there are similar answers, it'll offer to grade them the same way. And then you end up with a list of valid options in order from best to worst. But it's not perfect, but otherwise I had a hard time picking which answers were best. But how did I generate the answers? Well, let's zoom out and look at the two TypeScript apps I created to handle this. First, I create the embeddings. All the code here is using bun, which you can find at bun.sh. I import glob to make it easier to list files in a directory. And then olama to run the embed process. And then I have chunk text by sentence function in another module called Matt's LLM tools. That function takes some text, a number that is the number of sentences per chunk, 
and then another number that is the number of sentences from the previous chunk to include in this one. I call it overlap. Every chunk has to have two sentences or more, and the overlap has to be less than the size of the chunk. This uses sentence size, which outputs an array of sentences. I had done something myself, but it turns out detecting sentences is kind of hard because periods can appear in all sorts of places in a sentence. Sentence size just works so much better. And then there's some simple logic to create the chunks. Next, I have two arrays of chunk lengths and overlaps. This is used to create all the variations of chunk sizes. It's a bit smaller than last time because I have to grade all the answers myself, and that gets really boring really quickly. Okay, so find all the text files, then iterate it through the chunk lengths in the chunk lengths, and then for each overlap size in the overlaps array, and then I create my embeddings file. To do that, I cycle through all the source files, which are the scripts from my YouTube videos since January. Then chunk up the file using that chunk text by sentences function that we looked at earlier. Now feed each of those chunks to the nomic embed text model using Olama and get out the embedding. Push all the chunks with embeds to a huge array and then write that to a file. I have one file for each of the chunk slash overlap combos. Okay, now we can move on to generation. I'm importing Olama again, but I'm doing it a slightly different way this time. Then importing some functions to grab file names and sort them. Then I import the same compute cosine similarity I used in the previous video. I instantiate Olama a little differently this time. For generating the answers using my embeds, I decided to use Dolphin Mixtral. This is a big model. And on my M1 Max MacBook Pro, it takes quite a while to run through everything. So I quickly spun up an A100 with 80 gigabytes on brav.dev to handle the load. I showed how to do that on an earlier video. Brev really is an awesome service you should totally check out. I logged in and installed Olama and Tailscale and added the machine to my Tailscale network, then pointed Olama to that machine by specifying the Tailscale name in the host field. Next, I define some questions that I want to ask the model using all the embeddings. I pass each of those questions to the nomic embed model to generate embeddings. Then I go through each of the questions and each of the embedding files, and for each chunk, I compare the question embed to the chunk embed and store those scores and chunks in a new array. I then sort that by similarity and grab a bunch of the embeddings to pass on to the model. How many embeddings? Well, it depends on the embedding size. I add more embeddings until the word count goes above 1,000. Why 1,000? Seemed like a nice number. So embeddings that were 50 sentences would only allow for one or two embeddings to be included. And embeddings with two sentences allowed for a lot more. This way, the model gets roughly the same amount of contextual information. The difference is how big each chunk is. Then I create a prompt, including the source text for the embeddings, and pass them all to Mextral. So why did I choose to use Dolphin Mixtral for this step? Normally, I wouldn't use it because it is slow, but I really wanted to focus on the chunk sizes for this video and get the best answers. I tried Gemma at first and really did not like what I was seeing. Stable LM2 and Stable LM Zephyr were also just not that great. When I tried Dolphin Mixtral, the answers were just so much better that I stuck with it. Another test to try would be for each chunk size, do some models work better than others? Well, when everything is done, it outputs all the results to a JSON file called answers that I can then process to figure out what is the best answer for each question. So what chunk size did best? Well, just like the last time, I don't think I could say any one size is better than any other for every project. This is more of an exercise to see how to figure that out for my data. So let's take a look at some of that process. I open up my answers.json file in my top answers tool. And here I can see the first batch of three options for the question. What does numctx do? The first one says numctx is an option used in Olama's models to set the context size, which determines max tokens that can be processed by the model at once. Uh, larger values can be specified. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that looks good. But the second one appears appears in the context of programming or machine learning, possibly referring to no, it 
It feels too wishy-washy to be useful. The, the exact meaning may vary depending on the application. No, I, I don't like it. And the third one, uh, not, not, not explicitly mentioned. What? No, I don't like it. So I'll just enter A and press return. Okay, it identified another two answers similar to the one I accepted. And now I have a chance to give it the same number of points as the other one. Both of them aren't exactly like that one, but I do like them. So I'll just accept and move on. In this next one, I like A and B, but C talks about some issue that existed. I don't like it. And now I can see if another option is like one of the ones I accepted before. And I move on to the next, and I like all of these, so ABC and Enter. And I keep going through these options till I grade them all. With each batch, I see the current scores for my answers, and I can see here that six or seven have been rejected. Ultimately, I ended up with the best few models for each of the questions. The results of the comparisons was interesting. For my question about NumCTX, the lengths of eight and 10 sentences perform best with zero or one overlap sentences. For the question about where it stores the models, it was the same eight and 10 sentence chunks that did best. The question about the Docker image resulted in some amazing answers from the 20 sentence chunks, as well as the eights and tens. The programming languages one didn't get any good results, but it's not that great a question. Finally, the question on NFARS was okay, with the 10 sentence chunks performing best. Most of the others tended to focus on the Olama models environment variable instead. In general, the eight and 10 sentence length chunks seem to perform best most of the time. So for this app, I would probably go there. I ran into a lot of issues putting this video together. At first, I thought it was how I performed the test, but switching over to some papers from archive and the same process worked really well. But since my knowledge on those topics is rather light, my questions were general and the results seemed to do a good job. But then again, I don't have the knowledge to assess that accurately. My scripts are definitely written in a very informal style with answers being spread out over a lot of time. So getting all the pieces for an LLM to answer it can be tough. I had switched over to the docs for a bit and got better answers for some things. The more accurate and relevant knowledge you can feed the model for any given question, the better the model will perform. And some models can work with that information better than others. There's actually a lot of work being done right now at how to make RAG better. Stuff like ranking before and after the chunk selection and pre-processing the query and more. It's probably early days still for RAG, especially considering work on the language models we know and love really started back in the early 90s. At this point, I definitely want to move on to the vector stores and see how they can make an app like this better. Maybe it's easier to build or, or faster or uses less memory or, or can scale bigger. I don't know. I've been getting some recommendations for vector stores to cover, but what do you think I should cover first? Do you know of a simple project that you think is a, a better demonstration of RAG than what I put together? Let me know about that and maybe we can show it off in the future video. Do you have any other projects that leverage Olama that you think I should cover? I don't know if I want to cover commercial projects just yet, but open source tools would be great to include here. Thanks so much for being here. Goodbye. Getting hot in here.